Let me tell you um, a true story about early centralized, decentralized uh, finance. It's a good story because it's got some aspects of peer-to-peer -peer and it really uh, presages the, uh, the rise of decentralized finance. So this comes under the category uh, of fintech. And this is a project that I was involved with in 2001. So this is the problem that considered the foreign exchange market. So we've got one company or person, Alice, who needs to buy 100 million euros at the end of September to pay for a machine. So Alice goes to her bank and the bank quotes a rate in terms of the exchange of dollars for euros for the end of September. Now, there's somebody else that's also a customer with the bank, uh, Carol. And she needs to actually sell 100 million euros and translate them into dollars at the end of September. So Carol goes to her bank and the bank quotes her a rate. And it's a different rate. Even though this happens at the same time, the rate that's quoted to Alice and Carol are different. And the difference in the rate is called the spread. And this is the bank's profit, and it can be very uh, substantial. So 20 years ago, um, a simple idea uh, was formed. So Carol and Alice use the same bank. So why not just put them together? This is very powerful because if you put them together, you eliminate the spread. So Carol is better off and Alice is better off. And indeed, if you think about the network implications, many people have banking relationships with different banks. So it might be that we could actually have this work across many different uh, banks. And to make it worthwhile for the bank, um, they will handle the, the credit quality evaluation and we'll give them a small fee, but the spread is gone. And this fee is nowhere near as much as the spread. Okay, so to be clear, this is really good for Carol, it's really good for Alice, but the bank is going to take a hit as a result. So uh, this is the story um, of this project, uh, indeed on the front cover of Euromoney uh, magazine. It was uh, one of the very first uh, decentralized uh, finance uh, applications. And you can see the network uh, diagram and how uh, this actually worked to match customers of a bank or all participating uh, banks. So now, uh, what I'd like you to think about is going to the senior management of the bank or the board of directors and making a pitch for this new technology. So we're basically asking you to spend money on this new technology to match your customers and uh, it will when you do that, uh, you'll get paid a small fee, but your spread is gone. Okay, so the pitch is effectively pay us some money to implement this strategy and it will greatly reduce your profit. So you're spending money to effectively lose money. So you can imagine that is a, a pretty a difficult uh, pitch. But even at this time, 20 years ago, the banks realized that this just is not sustainable. The customers are upset that they have to pay the spread when it's really clear that there's technology that exists today to match the customers. 
So, so even though uh, a very tough kind of sell or spend some money to reduce your profits, the banks realized that they had to make innovations like this or uh, customers would seek non-bank uh, solutions within the context of fintech. So this is not the only early application of peer-to-peer uh, -peer sort of uh, transactions. So the previous application was peer-to-peer -peer within a bank. Uh, this idea of dark pool trading actually began in 1979. So it used to be uh, for a particular stock, you had to trade on a particular exchange where it was designated. So effectively uh, imposing monopolistic power um, by that exchange. But uh, the emergence of dark pools allowed in particular large um, kind of uh, asset managers to trade uh, amongst peers in an off-exchange sort of method. And today, interestingly, uh, about half of all stock trading doesn't occur on the traditional exchanges like the New York Stock Exchange. Um, there, of course, are, are other uh, sort of uh, players that have emerged in the fintech uh, space. So um, PayPal was formed, founded in 2000 uh, as a way to speed up payments. Um, a number of banks have, uh, have implemented Zelle, which is the payment mechanism. But this is really important to understand, and I'm going to emphasize this multiple times in the course. These payment initiatives, well, they improve the user experience and are good in that they improve the user experience. They can only go so far. They can only go so far because they are using the legacy uh, banking structure. And that, that banking structure will be disrupted with decentralized uh, finance.